90% of all foreclosures. My name is T. Patrick Murray, and I'm an award-winning filmmaker. I've made four-star films, such as The Last Game, it was on ESPN, it was called perhaps the most exciting movie I've ever made, perhaps the best documentary I've ever made, and by uh, Any Cool News, and most importantly, it was also called the um, most exciting movie I've ever made, and the best sports film I've ever made. It doesn't really matter. Wait, well, the best one is the, the Any Cool News. Critics have uh, said it about my work that I, one film I made, The Last Game, was called um, the best documentary I ever saw about a critic. Um, anyway, it's um, it's really not about my filmmaking ability as much as it's about the message or the truth or what I presume to be true or what I'm alleging is true. Is it true? Am I full of shit or am I wrong? Uh, is J.P. Morgan not an evil corporation? Are they not doing with the illegal things that uh, I'm saying? Well, hey, maybe I'm wrong. I admit that. Um, that's what this film's going to find out for both the judicial process and through the process of using the film itself to have public opinion dictate whether or not these assertions I've made about their frauds, these assertions I've made about the relief that they owe all of Americans, anyone that's ever had a mortgage, not only Chase, but the, all the major banks, they have committed fraud of a nature that has not been discussed, besides the typical things that we all know about, like robo signing, and, you know, not having the note, and all these other typical things, which are very true and very valid, there are other things that are much more nefarious, much more subtle, much more uh, obfuscated, tough word, but mm, hidden. Uh, and it took me three years to teach myself how to be a serviceable pro se litigant or lawyer because uh, I couldn't afford a lawyer, even though my wife is a lawyer, but she hates being a lawyer. She's also a chemical engineer, calculus teacher, and she has an MBA, so she's nuts in terms of smartness, but she, uh, she likes to cook and she just loves cooking. So she cooks and teaches calculus. So anyway, here's the point. I do come the uh, lawyer. I did. I was the lawyer. And uh, I beat the J.P. Morgan Chase. Uh, they withdrew their case voluntarily uh, after the judge said to me that um, what I wrote was Google believe quote unquote, and that even if I had all the facts on my side, I would never, ever, ever prevail. Two and a half years later, I prevail. Well, about a couple months ago, these guys actually uh, started to sue me again. They began to uh, basically uh, start the process over and sue me again. The thing is that when you sue somebody for foreclosure, or for any matter actually, in the state of Pennsylvania, I don't know about other states, in the beginning it says, there's this thing called a cover page, and it says, is there any related cases? And why is this you know, important? Well, this is important because if you're dealing with any type of uh, dispute of any kind, the judge or the jury or the, the judicial system needs to know if there's been any other adjudication or a process resolution or anything going on related to this issue. Uh, they lied and they said, no, there are no related cases, and they started a new one. Why? Because the one that we had done in 2009, which I beat them at, uh, basically exposed them greatly to liability of both civil and criminal nature. And what were those things? What did I find out? I found out smoking guns. I, find out, I found out stuff that if they had gone into court, I would have won. And on the record, they would have been... They would have gotten in trouble, and that would have led to a lot of other cases uh, through precedent and uh, citation and the way that the system works. It, it would have helped other people, so they didn't want to go to trial. Uh, they just tried to do a default judgment on me using the uh, 2009 case. Think about this. They sued me two months ago for 2012. I uh, answered it. Well, I did preliminary objections. I'm dealing with the case. In other words, I'm, I'm in the thick of it, right in the middle. Uh, preparing my answer, doing my counterclaims, etc., etc., and then after I blow them out of the water and call attention to the fact, too, from the judge that these guys are literally the the, the attorneys, uh, who I'm not going to name now, but I will, uh, and the plaintiff are committing judicial fraud because they know that there's another case out there, but they don't want the evidence, the record, the discovery that we had engaged and obtained through the three-year process. They don't want that involved. They want to start fresh and just try to like squeak out a little, you know, default judgment. Most times when people get foreclosed upon, this is what occurs. They get foreclosed upon, they get it, they shit their pants, they don't know what to do. So what happens? Well, then they go and, you know, probably drink or do drugs or shut down emotionally, sleep. I don't know what the hell they do. The point is they certainly don't defend it and get a lawyer. That's, and, and, no, and I don't fault anybody because it's the scariest fucking thing that can happen to you. It's, I call it civil capital punishment. It's losing the biggest possession you ever had, your house. So it's cool that, you know, someone would wig out when this happens. Here's the thing, though. 
from that day, let's say it's August 1st that I got this foreclosure notice, I had 20 days to do something. 20 days, less than three weeks. Do you know how quickly that goes by, especially in the summer? So the fact is, is that if you don't respond and do something in 20 days, guess what? They walk in with something called a default judgment, which they give you 10 days notice for, but you'll probably blow that off. So within 30 freaking days, within a month, they could have by the 30th day a sign by the pathonotary default judgment. What's that mean in English? You've lost your home within a month. 99% of the time, that's what happens. Do you hear me? 99% of the time, that's what happens. If you watch this movie, do you see J.P. Morgan? Not only are you going to learn about all the crazy things they've done and how I'm going to do my best to bring justice and make them pay and, you know, have it come out and press and do all these things. Uh, if they don't kill me or hurt me or ruin me first, you know, which is completely a possibility. I'm not saying murderers. I'm just saying I watch, I am a filmmaker, so I do watch movies and I know that crazy shit happens, especially for whistleblowers. So anyway, the point is that, well, I really don't fear that. I really don't think Jamie Dimon is that violent of a guy. Like I said, I'd love to play around a golf with him and, uh, you know, have a beer. Uh, but he's not going to get another dime out of me because he sold my loan to Wall Street. And then, uh, so that debt's been repaid and he no longer has the collateral, which is what a mortgage really is. People say uh, that, you know, they pay their mortgage, but really no one ever pays a mortgage. There's no such thing. A mortgage is a secondary security instrument that is the collateral, collateral, uh, the collateral of a note, a debt. Okay, so that's it. It starts with a debt or a note. Got it? Then the mortgage is a secondary paper. The person that signs for the note sometimes, or the person that signs the note signs the mortgage, certainly, but sometimes people that sign the mortgage don't even sign the note. So it's completely two different things, okay? So understand that. So when someone tries to enforce the mortgage, that's like saying, we're going to repo your car because you're not paying. Okay, fine. So who can repo it? Well, Ford can repo it if it's a Ford. Chrysler can't repo it, right? And if, you know, uh, Ford sold themselves to, or we'll forget that illustration, Jaguar. Jaguar sold themselves to Ford. Well, once they sold themselves to Ford, it wasn't Jaguar's place to collect after they had certain people to fall. It would be Ford's because it's Ford's company. In other words, debt like assets are signed and owned by people. And the whole issue here is, well, not the whole issue, but one of the main issues is who owns this debt? Turns out, at least for a certain era of the origination of these mortgages, nobody owns them. Nobody owns them anymore. They're balkanized, they're fractionalized, they're mutilated and put into this Humpty Dumpty can never put it back together situation, which is what these CDO MBS, with their tranches and their complexities and their, again, I can't even say the damn word. It's impossible almost to find your mortgage within one of these things. And we just found out J.P. Morgan's Wamu pass through certificates are invalid for some reason from a Florida case. The whole thing is coming down around them. I won't be surprised, and it's August of 2012, I won't be surprised if J.P. Morgan literally goes bankrupt by the end of the year. Possible. But anyway, here's the deal. Why should you watch, invest, be part of, help, encourage my film chasing J.P. Morgan? Why should you give a shit when you got a lot of other things that are better to do? Because I'll tell you why. Not many times in life is there an opportunity to take such a powerful organization that's fucking around with all of us, making us pay front-loaded interest unfairly, not disclosing it to us, not rebating us that prepaid interest when we bail out in five years and sell our home or get refied, which is what they should do. Cut us the difference between the advance interest we paid and what we actually use in terms of the time value of the money. Trust me, I make this all clear in the film. But here's the thing. Anyone that listens to this film, I can't guarantee you anything except knowledge and a shot at getting paid if you've been injured like I have. And how have I been injured? Well, I have been foreclosed upon by a company whom I paid every payment for about four some years straight, a quarter, more than a quarter of a million dollars I paid back to them. Borrowed 600, paid them like two, 68, okay, by the time I had my first default, uh, which was September or November, I think September of um, 2008, so four years ago. So I've been living without paying my mortgage because we've been in three, well, three cases, and this is the third. And um, the point is simply this. 
my case is interesting and all that, but that's not really worth making a movie about. What's make, the, the thing that's really worth making a movie about is this aspect that I'm trying to create a class action for, which is about the fact that the interest that they give you, that they say 6% is a lie, there is no such thing. I will show you the math where 6% is 580% effective rate in the first year. And that how anyone that tells you that that's bullshit or that it has to be that way, do the following. Take the amount, let's just take $100,000, okay? $100,000. Let's figure this out, okay? You take the amount owed, 100 grand, and you, multi you divide it by 360. That's 30 years of, that's 30 payments. 360 payments is 30 years of payments, okay? Got it. You take that and you divide that. You get a number, okay? I don't know what the number is off my head, my head, but you get a number, okay? If it's 6%, okay, well then, and this is the fun part. Let's say they get 6% every year, which first year would be six grand, but because we're paying down the principal, it should reduce the amount of interest, right? But let's have fun. Let's just give them 6% every year for 30 years, okay? Just to be generous, and that's how crazy this is. Wait, you see how this works out. So, Ray, we gotta pay the 100 grand back, and then we have six grand a year for 30 years. So six times 30 is 180. So we owe a grand total of $280,000. And 100 grand is, int of is principal, 180 grand is interest, which is, by the way, not a true interest figure. It is one that I'm just giving them and saying that there's no reduction in principal the whole time. They're just going to get that straight out type of interest just to make it simple. Okay, now take that amount of money we owe over 30 years and divide each by 360, and you'll get a number, and add those two numbers up. That number, that payment, okay, is going to be to the penny, the same as if you were to go into a typical mortgage calculator where they'll say, hey, compute your payment. Put in 100 grand, 30 years, at 6%, and you will get a payment every month what the payment is. And that payment has a dynamic relationship about how much goes to the debt and how much goes to interest. My whole argument is that there's a fraud in that instead of making it equal and paying back the interest over time correctly at the 6% rate that's advertised, they do it in a way where it's 580, then it's 107 in the fifth year. It doesn't get to 6% till the last freaking year. So it's a crime, it's not disclosed. And then even if it was disclosed, people don't understand it and the least sophisticated debtor rule validates that. And the final thing is, even if they just closed it and gave us fucking pictograms and explained it to the biggest fucking idiot there is on the planet, it's still illegal because they don't give us our money back when we bail out by selling the damn house or refining. Because at that point, if you got out of a loan in five years instead of 30, then you don't owe 30 fucking years worth of interest. You owe five years worth of interest because you've given their money back. Interest is time value of money. So they presume when you got closing that you're going to have this for 30 years, that you're going to live the rest of your life and you're going to be happy. They're not going to take into account your divorce and, you know, when you go to rehab for AA and, you know, whatever the fuck your deal is. The point is that that's how it's set up. And that's fine if it's set up that way. But even if you go 30 years with it, it's still unfair because you shouldn't be paying at that ratio. You should be acquiring equity or ownership at a steady rate, like they should be acquiring their profit or interest. That's fair, that's reasonable, that's actually the way Iceland did it, until the bankers, I guess, took over. The point is, is that it makes sense, and if you just do what I said, you'll see that then there's no mathematical imperative to do it. It's not like, oh, we gotta kinda do it this way because to make it, this is one argument I've heard, to make it affordable for you, you know, we're gonna have to do this payment this way, and that's why we put so much interest on the front end because, you know, we have to make it really affordable. Fuck that, it's the opposite. If you wanna make it affordable, do you actually, no, let's just go one final thing. Let's say we took that interest that will go down. 100 grand, first year we pay six grand of interest, okay? Well, if we're gonna pay over in 30 years, um, hundred grand back, that means, I'll tell you right now, every year we're paying back $3,333, basically, right? Okay, so that means that in, ready, 10 years, we will have paid 33 grand back. So we will be paying interest only on 77 grand. So while the payment that's fixed for the repayment of principal will always stay the same. In my first example, I kept the interest at 180, just to make it simple. Now, actually, we compute annually 
what the new interest rate is because it goes from 100 grand to 100 grand to 6% of 97 grand roughly and three, 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 three down from there. In again, 10 years it's down 33 grand. In 20 years it's down 60, it's down to owing 33 grand. So my point is, is that it, your payment would actually reduce itself over time. Over a 30 year loan done properly and not illegally, a 30 year loan with a fixed interest rate and a fixed payment would amortize in a way where you would actually, get this, you would actually have payments that were giving you ownership, equity, wealth at a constant rate, just like they'd be getting their profit and, and do interest. But more importantly, the payments would go down because as you repay principal back, interest would be reduced. So why don't they structure it that way? Well, why the fuck do you think they don't? Because they're fucking criminal pigs and they want, they want it. They just want it and they can take it. Why am I making this movie? I'm not the fucking smartest guy in the world and I'm no fucking, I just understand that this happened because I, you know, I had to fight for my freaking house to stay in my house and I had to read every fucking book and I had to go through every page of, thousands of pages to learn this and the fact is I learned it and I'm passing it on to the world and I don't know what's going to happen with it but I'll tell you this if there's nothing done about this and people keep paying a mortgage that is literally financial rate 500 and fucking 80 percent the mob is fucking looks like mom and pop shop compared to that think about that 580 percent your 510 Seven, I think it's, it is, okay? Whatever the point is, is it's not right at all. Look how pretty this is. Check this out. Isn't that pretty? Pretty flowers. Pretty. It's very pretty where I am right here. Pretty. There's the moon. Pretty. Football. Clouds. Anyway. All right, listen. I'm done here. Point is this, right? I'll tell you. Uh, now, I thought I had this big wrap-up, but I know. Chasing. How about this? Chasing J.P. Morgan. Let me ask you something. If you saw a crime happening, really, right in front of you, as you're walking by, doing whatever you're doing, you saw some old lady get her uh, purse snatched by somebody, a robber, a criminal, and run away with it, you have two choices, right? One is to do nothing, sit there, watch it, Maybe feel bad for her, but not do anything. That's, that's option number one. Option number two is going after that thief, that criminal, that person, and trying to get back what is the person whom they stole it from. It's the old lady's purse. So, um, in my mind, J.P. Morgan Chase is the biggest corporate criminal in the world. And they hold my mortgage and they're trying to foreclose on me. Well, I have evidence and reasons and I can explain, and that's what my film will talk about, why J.P. Morgan Chase's entire structure of origination of mortgages to the foreclosure process is uh, plagued with fraud and rife with uh, uh, all types of criminality, and uh, both on a civil and criminal level, and on a state and federal level, and on an individual and a class action level, and 